Okay, guys, so welcome back. Uh, like I mentioned, we'll be getting some uh, additional uh, dysrhythmias in this next section. Things are a little bit more, uh, certainly more uh, pathological. Now, the first uh, pattern we'll get into are uh, A flutter and A, a fib. So, uh, A flutter um, occurs when we have multiple uh, ectopic pacemakers within the atria. We end up seeing uh, this presentation of these sawtooth waveforms because, again, in this situation, we don't really have P waves. Kind of do we don't have P waves? We don't have a healthy SA node set in the pace. Uh, the ventricular rate for this is still pretty normal, um, and we end up seeing this um, R to R wave being pretty consistent. Um, so basically what ends up happening is the atria are basically fluttering because we have so many of these uh, ectopic pacemakers, or at least one very prevalent one. So draw a heart. And again, this ectopic pacemakers you can think of as almost little gremlins. You end up having, you know, right side, left side. You end up having so many of these Right, you know, they end up, well, that's not, that's not the, let's erase that one. That's not in the atria. You have so many uh, pace, these ectopic pacemakers getting in. Here's our SA node normally, or AV node, right? You have so many of these, they end up causing spontaneous discharge and depolarization of the atria that you get these little flutters. So again, it's not, uh, these are not P waves. These are what we call delta waves. So they look like little triangles or delta. And the, the pattern with a flutter is that you get uh, a consistent number of these before every single QRS complex. So uh, the reason being that these QRS complexes are still normal is because this ectopy um, that you know is causing these irregularities in the atria get into the conduction system, causing uh, depolarization. They still exist above the ventricles, so the atria, so the QRS complexes will still look narrow and normal, there just won't be any P waves present, there just won't be any T waves present because there's so much electrical noise occurring in the atria that kind of blocks out uh, those, those signs. And there are no P waves because there is no SA node really doing its thing. So that is um, A flutter. Um, again, we've got fairly normal looking R to R intervals in this, in this sense. The rates generally pretty normal. So again, look at this one, 300, 150, 160. Uh, sorry, three, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60. So again, this is probably somewhere, yeah, I'd say between 72 beats per minute, roughly. So heart rate's fairly normal. Um, these pe people may have symptoms like palpitations potentially, um, but, you know, um, not as concerning maybe as its cousin, a uh, a fib now um, with either a fib or a flutter the big concern is because when we don't have a normal beating atria either it's fluttering or it's fibrillating which we'll, we'll get into you lose atrial kick um, meaning that you know when we talk about that 25 percent that contributes to stroke volume that contributes obviously to the cardiac output yeah uh, you lose that if the, if the atria aren't beating you know, normally we don't get that extra kick. And of course we don't have normal electrical mechanical coupling causing inefficient pumping. You know, younger individual, maybe it's not as appreciable in terms of their ability to limit or its impact on exercise capacity or their ability to move around. On an older patient, it might be a little bit more concerning. Um, additionally, when blood isn't moving, you know, in and out of a, of a heart regularly has a, a tendency to, uh, you know, to clot, Right, or if it becomes stagnated, it has a tendency to clot, um, as well as if it's turbulent within there, which happens with flutter and fibrillation. You have turbulent, stagnant, um, or blood that's not moving through endothelialized tissue. You have a high risk of developing clots, especially in AFib, because in AFib, unlike those flutters, you have uh, the atria fibrillating. Fibrillating means uh, worm-like or writhing. So basically, that's kind of what the the atria do. So if you guys have done any fishing um, and looked at a bucket of worms, or if you have, you know, watched maybe Indiana Temple, I think it's the Temple of Doom, um, or Lost Raiders of the Lost Ark, we have the snakes on the ground. Um, that's kind of what that looks like, a bunch of writhing, withering worms. Um, and AFib, uh, that's, you know, due to an excessive amount of ectopy, causing the atria to kind of beat all, you know, it's going through these, you know, these rapid undulations, right? 
Um, so just many, many ectopic pacemakers located in the atria. Um, and because of there's just so much electrical noise causing the atria basically to quiver, um, you, you don't really see much activity at all, right? You, you know, so I'm like flutter where you see those flutter waves um, with AFib, the, the atria are basically quivering or fibrillating, looking like those writhing worms, right? They're not effectively beating really at all, they're not, or they're not beating at all. So with this, you end up seeing a bunch of gobbledygook. You don't really see much signal there. There's no P wave. There's really no T wave either. And you often see, unlike an A flutter, where we had pretty consistent R to R intervals, in A fib, the R to R intervals are very variable. They're all over the place because there's so much randomness occurring in the atria with those ectopic, ectopic pacemakers. They, you know, they get in haphazardly and maybe they discharge and spontaneously produce um, a QRS complex. The QRS complex will still be narrow looking, right? Because it's still started above the ventricles. But it's obviously not coming from the SA node. We don't see any P waves. And there's so much of this electrical noise that the it happens haphazardly. The R to R intervals are inconsistent, right? It's not one, you know, one particular um, SA or one particular pacemaker setting uh, even its irregular pace. It's all over the place. So uh, that's the big problem with AFib. There's just so much more ectopy. Um, and the R to R's are, are variable. You often see isoelectric line variance because you can see like the line here isn't even consistent. So you see this, no P waves, but normal looking QRS complexes, sometimes they can be even a little wider too in AFib. Um, you know, and isoelectric line variance, R to R variance, and then no discernible P waves, uh, think AFib. Now we classify AFib as well by control because um, you know, uh, we we give patients a little bit higher ceiling just because of the irregularities in terms of what an acceptable heart rate is. So anyone who's below 110 will say that they have adequate control. It's usually our goal of medication is to get the heart rate a little below that. Again, the higher the heart beats, the more it has to work. Um, but if it, you know, uh, goes above 110, we'll call that inadequate control. Um, this is really more or less referring to heart rates generally at rest. And again, just breaking down the difference between AFib and A-flutter. The P wave in A-flutter has that distinct sawtooth morphology, right? Um, the AFib, these aren't even really P waves. Um, and really, in the other end, they're other flutter waves or fibrillations. Um, but you, you, know, they, you won't really see any, and you might not even detect, uh, or hard to detect any activity at all. The rhythm of A-flutter is usually fairly regular. Again, you usually have one or two, you know, or, sorry, two or three, or four sawtooth, you know, waves before a QRS complex. There is no regularity whatsoever to a um, to AFib, right? It's kind of all over the place. So very high R to R variability, isoelectric line variability, um, and again that you know, we have that consistent, you know, four to one pattern. And again, the, there aren't really P waves in, in AFib because there's really no SA node kind of set in the pace. It's it's from ectopic pacemakers. Um, so we'll end here and then we'll get into AV node blocks.